Hi, here I wanted to discuss the people in the alternative media who explain to us daily how the world works and how little we know about them and how easily we trust such people. While we scrutinize politicians or the people playing politicians, we generally don't apply the same level of critical thinking to the ones who are presumably on our side. So basically, if they are not on the side of the politicians, then they must be the good guys. There is talk here and there about controlled opposition, but then how bad can someone be if he just wakes up people? Even if a person does not tell the truth, he is, let's say, closer to the truth, and so what is the big deal? Why even worry about it? Here I wanted to discuss people like the financial expert and author Ernst Wolf and the people regularly interviewing him and other high-profile people like him. These are generally highly trusted. Ernst Wolf is just an example. In fact, I started listening to him in 2020 when many of us were absolutely shocked about the events unfolding in front of our eyes. Many, me included, needed someone like him. Clear, focused, saying things straight out, rational, with an analytic mind, and eloquent. Most importantly, he and people like him presumably saw the big picture beyond the daily changing lockdown rules and craziness. That was highly valuable and comforting. Now many still listen to him and he basically has the same message. That the governments collude in a so-called Great Reset to introduce central bank digital currencies, CBDCs in short, to enslave the people worldwide. He also says all is a show, doesn't matter who you vote for. They are all part of the financial industrial complex along with Wall Street, BlackRock, the pharma industry, in Silicon Valley's IT and social media corporations. And many things are in my mind, at least very likely correct. And that's how trust is gained. Generally, I'm quite sure about my analysis here on this channel and very few I would change in retrospect. The one on the moon landing I would like to redo one day. However, with this one I'm about to do, I'm a bit less certain and I'm mainly asking how we would know whether someone like Ernst Wolf means what he says. Is he the real deal, a patriot, a libertarian with the highest moral values? And if Ernst Wolf is a real deal, then I would like him to be open-minded and address some of the following questions in one of his future interviews. Let's look at a recent interview conducted by Chrissy Rieger, a financial consultant of the alternative kind. ...von deutschem Boden aus auch Russland angreifen könnten. Also auf diese Art und Weise wird der Konflikt zwischen Russland und den wichtigsten Ländern innerhalb der EU und Großbritannien dann äh, gewaltig verschärft. Also es ist unglaublich, wie dieses Land im Moment heruntergewirtschaftet wird und zwar mit Ansage und mit Absicht. Hallo meine Lieben, unser heutiger Gast ist Ernst Wolf. Vielen Dank für Ihre Zeit. Ja, danke für die Einladung. Sehr gerne. Und wir beginnen mit der feindlichen Übernahme der Commerzbank durch Unicredit. Und was hat es da auf sich? Ja, das ist ganz interessant, weil diese feindliche Übernahme hat ja noch nicht ist ja noch nicht passiert, aber die steht ja möglicherweise bevor. Aber interessant ist der ganze Hintergrund. Also die Commerzbank ist ja in der Weltfinanzkrise damals in große Schwierigkeiten geraten. Dann ist der Bund da eingestiegen, am Anfang mit 25 Prozent, um diese Bank zu retten. Also mit Milliardenbeträgen ist diese Bank dann über Wasser gehalten worden. Ähm, in den letzten Jahren hat der Bund dann immer noch, ich glaube, so 10 bis 11 Prozent gehalten. Und der Bund ist im Moment in Schwierigkeiten. Die brauchen natürlich Geld und da haben sie jetzt einen Teil äh, ihrer Anteil. Before going into this interview further, Ernst Wolf was born in China and not long ago, about 10 years ago, he was a member of the German Socialistic Equality Party after Leo Trotsky, a Russian revolutionary and follower of Marx and Lenin, for the sake of communism. So while he relentlessly speaks out against the Great Reset and China-style communism, he was in a hardcore socialist party promoting communism. He certainly cannot help where he was born. But the party membership is a major red flag, and the information is right on Wikipedia for everyone to see. In a couple of other interviews, he said he's doing it, said is speaking out publicly for his grandchildren, but he expresses and shows no fear of repercussions. Why is that? Why is he not taken down from social media platforms? While he might not personally fear repercussions at his age, 
His children could lose their jobs or his grandchildren could face major oppression at school. Another odd thing is that he basically has the same message since day one and is absolutely sure about himself and his views. No self-doubt whatsoever. Why? Over the last few years, most of us went through a roller coaster of revelations and unexpected events and information. It must also be immensely tiring to keep repeating the same message nearly daily. And he does that in a repetitive robotic-like way. He always sounds the same, looks the same. In his interviewer here, Chrissy Rieger, also always looks the same, in the same bubbly mood and with the same voice. Even though she appears to be from the Ukraine, she does not ever get emotional about the tragic events over there. Even though both talk about the financial collapse, Chrissy sells financial advice on stocks and other sources of income, living the life of a digital nomad. But once the system crashes, stocks, online work, and traveling without real local support won't help a bit. Sure, it might help until then. Let's look at this recent interview in a bit more detail. Also, wer wissen will, auf welchem Niveau Frau Harris tickt, der sollte sich das Video ansehen über sie, was nur über eine Minute geht, wo sie erklärt, was die Cloud bedeutet, also die Cloud, in der gespeichert wird, wo sie tatsächlich auf den Himmel zeigt und sagt, da oben, da werden unsere Daten gespeichert. Also es ist einfach unvorstellbar, wie dämlich diese Frau ist. Wenn wir mal davon ausgehen, dass Trump gewinnen würde, äh muss man sagen, wäre das wirklich jetzt das Optimale für Amerika und vor allem sogar in Deutschland feiert man ja Trump, wobei er jetzt schon sagt, sozusagen, was für Auswirkungen das haben würde. Und die Frage ist eben auch, unter seiner damaligen Amtszeit, was hat er denn so glorreiches vollbracht? Na, erstmal muss man sagen, er ist angetreten mit dem Spruch Make America Great Again. Also alleine wer das äh, unterstützt, der sollte sich wirklich mal äh, über seinen geistigen Gesundheitszustand äh, ein paar Fragen stellen. Weil Make America Great Again, wie ist Amerika denn great geworden? Sie ist great geworden dadurch, dass sie erstmal 800 Indianerstämme ausgerottet haben, dass sie dann 10 bis 12 Millionen Schwarzafrikaner als Sklaven ins Land geholt haben, dass sie dann zwei Weltkrie in zwei Weltkriegen also, äh, aktiv gewesen sind, dass sie dann die einzigen zwei Atombomben auf Zivilisten geworfen haben, und zwar in Hiroshima und in Nagasaki, dass sie inzwischen 800 Militärstützpunkte in aller Welt aufgebaut haben, die gesamte Welt mit mehr Kriegen tyrannisiert haben als irgendein anderes Land. Also den Mann, der an der Spitze eines solchen Landes steht und der dann auch sagt, wir müssen unser Land wieder groß machen, also da, da muss man schon wirklich also ziemlich dämlich sein, um das zu unterstützen, vor allen Dingen als, als Europäer und vor allen Dingen als Deutscher. So while this looks like a spontaneous interview, it appears that he's reading off this part from a teleprompter. He looks left and then right, like a politician giving a speech. But if this was staged, then most other interviews are staged too, and the whole alternative scene goes up in smoke. He is one of the stars of the alternative media. Again, this is all pure speculation. Of course, the interview is not recorded live, so if staged, it could be recorded in pieces and then be edited. So why a teleprompter is unclear. And even if he reads off a teleprompter, it could easily be disguised better. There are ways where you read off and it appears that you look into the camera. So why let us see this? And the colors of her clothes look like Freemasonic and even satanic. And she even makes a cross and X with her arms on many YouTube covers. This is a symbol of the occult and stands for the crucifixion of Christ for skull and bones or for the Freemasonic square and compass symbolism. Looks like they need to show it, but most won't care anyways, presumably because noticing this would be too uncomfortable. Here's another very recent video. Mit Deutschland geht's bergab, das spürt jeder, der sich ein bisschen um, um sich herum schaut, mit der Industrie, der Autoindustrie, wo du hinguckst, irgendwie... Das Zukunftsszenario für Deutschland ist nicht gut und darüber möchte ich jetzt mit Ernst Wolf sprechen. Hallo. Ja, hallo. Vielen Dank für die Einladung. Ja, also ähm, bis jetzt hat sich der Euro ja ganz, ganz wacker gehalten, kann man sagen, aber es droht ungemacht nach deinen Analysen. Ja, insgesamt, das droht insgesamt ungemacht für alle Währungen im Moment, weil wir äh, erleben gerade, dass die Weltwirtschaft sich auf dem Weg in eine Rezession und zwar wahrscheinlich in eine Depression befindet. Und äh, dass die Zentralbanken versuchen gegenzusteuern, indem sie jetzt die Zinsen senken. Und interessant ist, dass diese Zinssenkungen uns auch äh, 
So again, he looks like he's reading of a teleprompter. Falsche Werte vorspiegeln. Also hier bei der letzten EZB-Senkung jetzt in der letzten Woche hieß es, der Zinssatz sei um. So he is reading off. Apparently, he focuses his eyes. He's concentrating. Nur 0,25 Prozent gesenkt worden. Dabei geht es aber nur um den Einlagenzins, also der viel wichtigere Zins, der zu dem sich die Banken da refinanzieren können. Der ist nämlich um 0,6 Prozent gesenkt worden. Der war vorher 4,25, ist jetzt 3,65. Also für mich ist das ein Zeichen, dass man in der EZB... So the odd thing was also said, said it looked like he was reading of numbers from his notes. That would make sense. He looked down to his left. But he actually looked down after he said the numbers. So apparently he's reading the numbers off the screen and then looks down to the skies, said he was reading them off and he wants to pretend he read them off his notes. Let's look at this again. So he's reading that off the screen. Then he looks down. So after he reads them off. Der war vorher 4,25. 4,25. And he looks down. Das ist jetzt 3,65. So he reads this off again from the screen. Also rümlich ist das ein Zeichen, dass man in der DZB. And he forgot to look down even. So what is the point of discussing this? And what's the harm when Ernst Wolf is warning people? CBDCs are evil and must be avoided. However, what if this is just a massive distraction? So we keep busy like the rabbit hypnotized, staring at the snake, unable to run. What if the Great Reset and with it the Great Awakening are just theater? When people worry about CBDCs, the next vaccine, whether AFD will be elected in Germany or Trump in the US, whether there will be a proper corona investigation, what to do about exploding crime rates and illegal immigration, who is winning what military conflict, or said our economies are being destroyed. We don't look at the real issues then. We don't look up. That there might be a cataclysmic event, a mass extinction of us, like the end of the dinosaurs, assuming they were real. What if the billions and trillions spent on aid for the Ukraine or bike lanes in Peru are mainly just cover and are in fact diverted by the elites to prepare massive underground bunkers to survive what's coming and we pay for it debating CBDCs. Listening to Ernst Wolf won't help them. While watching YouTube videos or going out to the remaining overpriced restaurants or a concert or football match or watching the latest shows on Netflix, they may build and equip bunkers like the Gotthard Tunnel in Switzerland and many other projects like it. If people really wanted to stop this, they would need to stop the elites from completing their secret projects by blocking the tunnels and mines. If the elites can't hide, there will likely be no apocalypse. Unless, of course, it's a reoccurring natural event, such as drastic changes in solar activity, for instance, every few thousands of years. However, that seems unlikely, as it would be highly stochastic with hundreds of years of uncertainty. But we seem to be close, maybe next year. There is a similar issue with the switching of the Earth's magnetic poles, and it's a rather slow gradual process. On the other hand, a comet on a precise orbit and flyby would be precisely predictable, but the chances to barely miss the Earth with sufficient effect while not destroying it seems extremely unlikely. Most likely, the cataclysmic event, if there's one, is staged by whoever runs the show here, human or non-human. The latter is a real possibility, as humans generally don't plan on timescales of thousands of years. Unless they are like the Bene Gesserit from Frank Herbert's Dune Saga. It might be about steering human evolution and societal development on a large scale, since after each reset, it is easy to steer the few survivors into a certain direction. While many won't like this video, I would be interested in reading your comments on this issue, and admittedly I'm also heavily speculating here more than in other videos. As usually, many thanks for watching and I talk to you next time, hopefully again on a topic on body language. Bye.